curatorial text by Flora Gaddo to the exhibition The Fourth Greenhouse by Martha Fisher over Svigliemsky. A forgotten story about an eccentric English aristocrat, Joseph Taff living in the Czech countryside in the early 19th century. An attempt to reconstruct a story in which almost all the materials have vanished. A journey back in time when greenhouses were considered as magical places presenting all the wonders of the natural world. A place which is gone, but some traces still remain, some of them in archives and some of them in the memory of others. Martha Fisher over Svikliansky got to know this estate because she is familiar with Miss Liberitz. It's her hometown and the investigative and research-based approach starts from her curiosity and eagerness to find out everything that is possible about this extraordinary place. As a child, you often imagine stories about things that you don't know and it looks like the artist developed further this approach. As we will see later, her project is based partly on facts and research, but fiction and imaginary parts are also interwoven in it. However, she is using fiction in the sense that the goal is not to come up with something which didn't happen but to use imagination in order to fill in the missing gaps which are necessary to reconstruct. The story. The interest in exotic flowers and plants. Transporting and growing them far away from their home was connected to the Enlightenment period and the eagerness of people to get to know the world and learn more about it. It was based on the idea of constant development and that the world is understandable. Paradoxically the artist's project about the forgotten greenhouse shows it is not possible to know everything, archival materials can vanish and you can never fully reconstruct a story. You can only get glimpses, fragments and certain storylines of it, and this is precisely what the artist managed to do in this exhibition. Through several years of research, the final exhibition presents various fragments and viewpoints about the estate and Miss Liberitz. Trying to reconstruct the story while keeping in mind that it's never truly possible. Thus not only the archival material comes alive, but also certain emblematic and characteristic objects and artifacts are representing the forgotten narrative within the framework of the exhibition. The artworks on display for the first sight of a nostalgic atmosphere. The herbarium with the collective plants and flowers remind us of the childhood habit of collecting leaves and preserving them in books. The textile prints in the glass sculptures bring us back in a time of Joseph Taft's obsession of collecting in the late 18th, early 19th century. On the prints, we can see plants which are connected to Miss Liberitz and the greenhouse in one way or the other. Like the huge coffee tree Taft bought or the magnolias he sold to Emperor Francis II. The glass sculptures, a bust of Buddha, a trowel, a watering can and other objects, which are placed on a cultivation tables, evoke on one hand the commonly used tools in a greenhouse as well as oriental objects which were commonly displayed there as decorative elements. Through these works as well as certain retomides, the artist attempts to reconstruct the former greenhouse, but she does it is not simply to revisit and imagine a golden past. Like in the book by French author Alain Faunier, who in his first and only novel, The Lost Estate, Le Grand Moines, 1913 writes about a forgotten and seemingly abandoned but magical chateau in the forest. Moreover, Martha Fisher over Svikliansky touches upon a quite urgent topic through these seemingly nostalgic elements. The colonial legacy of the 19th century and how these plants and flowers were brought to Europe from the former colonies and from other places in the world. The greenhouse itself, as the other venues presenting the other, was established in order to create a space where species from other continents could survive and could be presented to the elite as a luxurious hobby. The artist thus investigates this aspect of the story and emphasizes the various ways exploitation and exoticization of other territories, places and species took place in the past and asks what are the effects this has on the present. 
The interesting life story of Taff, an Englishman and a botanist living in the Austro-Hungarian monarchy also evokes the question of migration and trade. What are the current trade routes which we unconsciously also take advantage of and can we establish more local and grassroots initiatives in terms of, for example, the food industry? In the exhibition, Times intertwine and we can encounter a certain kind of multi-temporality in which both the artist's childhood and imagination. The attempt of a historical reconstruction together with the performativity of the archival material and a critical perspective could be seen simultaneously. The fourth greenhouse is now gone, but we can experience its golden days as well as its aftermath if we look closely at the textile prints the herbarium or the glass sculptures. The estate that de belongs to the evangelical church and hopefully, in the near future, its current user, a gardener, as well as the local community, would learn the history of the estate through the artist's works, which she also originally planned to show there, sites specifically.